in order to know the entire story, I guess we have to go all the way back to the beginning. I can't tell you what other people thought or the way that they looked at it. The only thing that I could tell you is my perspective. I didn't go into high school trying to be in a band. I, I love music, but I, I, wasn't, I was never in school saying, hey, I'm gonna be a part of a band. I, I fell into a band my senior year um, by accident. We had a senior talent show and there was a guy that had a band and the rest of his band were younger than seniors so he couldn't perform with his band so he asked me if i could perform with him for a senior talent show and basically the rest is history after i got a taste of being on stage and performing with this guy um <laughs> basically after performing with this guy uh, you know I, I i got a taste of of something that that definitely that i liked um, so I, I, I joined a band that, that was already, that was already going and, uh, we, we had an opportunity after we graduated from high school, I got an opportunity to go overseas and perform for our troops. I got to, uh, to do a USO tour. Um, it was three days after 9-11 and, you know, at that point in time, it, you know, it, we felt like it was our duty to go overseas and we went out and, uh, we played some original songs and we also played some cover songs. Um, we played about 40 songs and we got to perform for a uh, little over a month. Uh, got to fly into Germany, we got to fly into Ramstein Air Force Base, we drove the Autobahn. One of the best experiences of my life, but as I was over there and I got to meet the troops and um, got to talk to a lot of our soldiers that were out there, it kind of hit me. A, real deep in my heart and I felt like I wasn't the what I was doing what it, it just wasn't right um, so when we landed at DIA I, I, I quit the band that I was in um, a couple years later I got a phone call from uh, one of my good friends Aaron Mestiz um, he was a drummer from from our my high school and he asked me if I wanted to start another band that he had just quit, you know, their, his band just broke up and I told him, you know, it, it wasn't really something that I wanted to do because I didn't, I, if, if I did do it, um, I, wanted, I wanted it to be meaningful and, and he, he said that he, he wanted the same thing and that he had a bass player and uh, that was Ross, uh, probably the best bass player that I've ever seen play the bass guitar. Um, we got together in his attic in December of 2005. That night, we decided that we were gonna start a band. Ross had worked with another guitar player in, an, in another band and he recommended Adam, um, who eventually became our first guitar player. We got together, we jammed day one, day two, day three. We wrote Product of the Wasteland, Matter of Minutes, and Humble Beginnings were the first three songs that we wrote. And I think we felt that we had something kind of special. So um, Aaron, was the one that brought us all together. I give 100% credit to Aaron for, for being the one that, that basically put the ball in motion. Aaron even came up, the, came up with the name. We decided after we had a couple of songs, you know, we need we needed to figure out a name. And uh, we had a few ideas that got tossed around and Aaron said, you know, what about No One Left Standing? And No One Left Standing was born. And from that point on, we practiced every single day for like the next two or three months and we eventually during that time we wrote the entire first album um, which we titled N1LS.
we dropped the N1LS album under our own record label called The Wasteland Productions. And shortly after 2006, um, our drummer Aaron, the guy that started the entire project, uh, could no longer live in Colorado. If it came down to it, he was such a great drummer that we could even just fly him in for shows. But it was going to be extremely hard to, to do that. So the only thing that we could do was replace him. So it was kind of fucked up. I don't think any of us were really happy about it. Um, but we had all put a lot of hard work into it. And so we kind of kept, kept the project going. And we brought Nick Sowers in as a drummer. Amazing fucking drummer. The kid came in was able to you know learn a lot of our songs and also we kept us kept us writing new material shortly after that uh, an editor for the Westward magazine no names but he basically said that no one left standing was whack and that our songs and our music and material was 10 years too late and that we sounded too much like rage against the machine and hip hop rock was dead we lost nick and um, Adam basically right after we had let you know one of the best guys I've ever met go and the guy that basically started the project so me and Ross put our heads together thankfully there was a um, quite a few people that wanted to join the project and um, we we picked up uh, a kid named Dino and at the time a drummer named Fro uh, and two weeks later we wrote the song Jimmy the Kid Three weeks after that, we entered it into the KBPI's Best Band in Denver contest. Four weeks after that, we made the top 18. Let me take you back like an acid flashback. Tell me full of jackets, so focus in my backpack. Story about the past and an old school badass. In a 10 gallon hat, we'll make you pants and a gas mask. Who we'll never had no love for Mr. Johnny Law? Maybe that's because the law's always been wrong. Who am I to sit and judge society's laws? I'm Jimmy the Kid with six shots in my paw.
Spot on the set. Yep. Let's see, 2009, we entered the best band in Denver contest. Two weeks later, we picked up Caleb. Um, continued to write basically what would become the FAMP album. Made the top 18. And then uh, we won our first battle. And then we got into the, uh, the semifinals. And then we made the top three. And then we battled it out. And it was 2013 for Fort Collins, Havoc, and us. And uh, they called us all down to the KBPI studios. And if whoever won first place, they got to open up for like corn or somebody that night. And then Willie called us into the, uh, into the, uh, into the studio and he's like, all right. He's like, there's a tie for first place. <laughs> he's like, this never happened before. He's like, so we had to call somebody up and he called us into the studio at like seven o'clock in the morning and he was like, not no one left standing. <laughs> mm -hmm. We finished wrote, writing the FAMP album over the next year. And then Willie was like, you know, you guys got to get in the best band in Denver contest. And I was like, well, you know, it was kind of, kind of a blow to the ego, you know, it was, you know, pretty rough losing. Since we had tied for first the year before, it was like, okay, well, you know, we wanted a chance to redeem ourselves. So uh, we actually entered again, went through all the entire contest, and then we actually wound up winning um, that year. <laughs> The following year, 2011, um, was a bad, bad year. I mean, we just started falling apart, stopped communicating with each other. Um, there was some personal issues going on with the band, and um, we did the uh, the best band in Denver contest again. Clown from Slipknot was the judge, and uh, we 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 didn't win. So 2010 we won. 2011 we lost the title. 
And then basically like a week or two later, um, everybody quit the band. Uh, Ross, Dino, Caleb, they were like, we don't want nothing to do with this anymore. Three days after they left, Willie B called me up and said, do you guys want to open up for Corn?" And so I didn't even have a, a band. And uh, I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's, you know, we're down. So uh, I did Adam Gillespie call me and him had been talking again. I said, hey, do you want to? Do you want to play some old No One Left Standing songs? And and uh, he was like, fuck yeah. So he called up Nick and Nick was like, I'm down. And then uh, I told uh, Josh, he was in Dim Recordings at the time. I told him that I wanted to do a project with him. And I said, hey, well, I want to restart No One Left Standing and I want to add a DJ. So all we needed was a, was a bass player. The missing piece was the bass player. And well, we called up old Welshy and Welshy was uh, actually not doing anything at the time. And we had two weeks to prepare. We came down here in the basement every single day for two weeks, and they, we learned we learned a bunch of old No One Left Standing songs, and we got on stage and we opened up for Corn. It was one of the best experiences of my life. Funny thing is, is that we hadn't written any DJ parts for Josh, and he brought all his turntables up on this big ass Fillmore stage with with Corn, and he, he sound checked his turntables and. We played like two songs and he's like not doing anything because there was no parts for him. And the sound guy came up to him and was like, if you're not going to do anything, I'm just going to unplug you. <laughs> that shit was funny. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and right about the same time that we were supposed to open up for Corn, got a call from Gianni from 8th Element. It was like right around my birthday. And uh, Gianni gave me a call and said, hey... Uh, we want to sign a rock band to Eighth Element, and you'd be the first rock band that we, you know, that would be involved with us. And I told him I was like, I don't even have a band right now, you know. And Johnny was like, I don't give a fuck. I think, you know, this is a project that we want to get behind. And I think having those guys behind me really gave me a lot of courage and a lot of momentum to kind of do something that, you know, I really probably couldn't have done on my own, honestly. And with those guys back, we. You know, we're able to jump into the best band in Denver contest, and we were able to win the best band in Denver contest because at the time, Eight, Eighth Element was blowing up left and right. They had Nex and Poe, and they'd both dropped their albums. And then, you know, here it was, No One Left Standing, the first rock band on Eighth Element, and so we were basically just killing Denver at the time. Malha City, make some motherfucking noise! Underground. This is our style. Face down, the gutter tell someone is. 
You know, we won, we won the best band in Denver and we played a bunch of badass shows at the Fillmore. Um, we did a bunch of badass shows with a bunch of national acts. Nick, Nick decided he was going to get married, which was cool, so he, you know, sent out a text and was like, Hey, I'm sorry, I want to I wanna leave the band and I want to focus on my family. And so everybody was like, cool, you know, congratulations and, you know, good luck with what's going on. SHUT UP! You skipped the Gas Mask Society album. Shut up. We actually got to record our first album in uh, Colorado Sound Studios, and that would become the, the Gas Mask. Joshua! Christ! We got like two bars left on the camera. But you're still going. You're still talking, though. <laughs> like, thank you. That's where we need you. Right there. Keep it right there. <laughs> Went in, recorded the Gas Mask Society. Uh, we did a CD release party at some music hall. Good times, man. We were having good, good times. Um, released the album. We actually went on tour out to Ohio. We were doing good things, and you know, life goes on. You know, Nick wanted to go start a start a family. Nobody can nobody can blame him for that. And Gillespie left, and Bryce stuck around for a little bit, and then Bryce wound up leaving. And eventually Welsh had to leave because he was going to try to work on his family. We were able to uh, secure, well, Trevor, Adam, Eddie, and Josh. And, you know, Josh never left, so Josh stuck by me the entire time. The guys work hard. They've written 18 songs in, in about a year. And the fact that these guys could jump into this project, you know, so far into this project and make it their own and have no problems playing any of the old material right now, being in the studio again, we just left Colorado Sound for album number five. Just a creature of a night, illuminated when I write I'm gonna shoot this beam of light until the world will rise and shine Got me flipping things for the of the years gone by It's like if I try to cut turn back these hands of time I'm just a creature of a night, illuminated when I write I'm gonna shoot this beam of light until the world will rise and shine On the day of the dark, we're gonna hold that line Eyes on the prize, these rankings will be complex because She whispers under breath, this loser's better off dead So now I'm on this rooftop, wishing on these falling stars Close my eyes and there you are, put I'm right back up And now you're gone, to the lonely star, the lonely bar Heart still sound, but I'm so, so scarred Every dirty clash and every time I came in last I'm barking out loud as we heroes and feel cause we're Trees on shovel and die. Welcome, boys and girls, to the boulevard of broken dreams. Where the dead wander these streets without a cause and defeat. Like Marilyn Monroe and Mr. Jimmy Dean. So now I'm on this rooftop, wishing on these fallen stars. Close my eyes and there you are. But I'm right back up and now you're gone. To the lonely star in a lonely bar. Heart to some on a social scar. Every dirty clash and every time I came in last. I'm fucking out loud as shit heroes and girls and I'm just a creature of the night, illuminated when I rap I'm gonna shoot this beam of light until the world will rise and shine Got me flipping three photographs of the years gone by It's like if I try to cut some back these hands of time I'm just a creature of the night, illuminated when I rap I'm gonna shoot this beam of light until the world will rise and shine On the day of the dark, we're gonna hold that 
will be 